Kellogg's Pep. The super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. Who is today in the small village of Groveton, the scene of a mysterious bank robbery. We'll join him there as Clark Kent in just a moment. But right now, let's see what Dan McCullough's young pal Dick is muttering to himself about. Sue, three, Doris, nine, Pee-wee, ten. Hey, Dick, what's up? Huh? Oh, uh, what are all those figures and names you're calling off? Oh, all these. I'm making up today's list. List of what? Comic buttons, of course. The ones we're all collecting from packages of Kellogg's Pep. Yeah, but I don't... You know, Dan, we've got a race on to see who can collect the most, fellows or girls. Oh, sure, I did hear about that. Well, this is today's list, the figures on how many comic buttons each kid has collected so far. Every day we bring the totals up to date. Oh, I see, and who's ahead? Well, I, I kind of hate to tell you. <laughs> but I can guess. All right, guess. I bet the girls are ahead. Yeah, they are right now. But you just wait, the fellas are knuckling down. And by this time next week, those figures will be different. <laughs> well, Dick, maybe so. We'll see. But the important thing is how much doggone good fun the whole gang is having these days, collecting those exciting comic buttons. First, there's the thrill of seeing which button you find inside whenever Mom opens a new package of Kellogg's Pep. And if it's a duplicate, there's even more fun trading with your pals. Then there'll come a day when you can sport all 18 different buttons on your jacket or your dress or cap. So hop to it, gang. Ask Mom to get you some more of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal. Because that's the only way you can get these nifty comic buttons. You don't send in a single penny, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. But there's an exclusive prize in every package of P-E-P Pep. Made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now, the adventures of Superman. series of amazing bank robberies committed by a mysterious individual who not only seems to possess superhuman strength, but wears the blue costume and red cape of Superman, is puzzling Clark Kent and his friend Bruce Wayne, otherwise known as Batman. The robberies themselves are peculiar because in each instance, the money stolen has been forwarded to a charitable organization with a card that says, Compliments of a Friend. Examining one of the cards, Kent was shocked to discover it was in his handwriting the handwriting he uses in his role of Superman. As we continue now, Kent and Batman, or Bruce Wayne, are at the scene of the latest bank robbery in the town of Groveton, just outside Metropolis. They are approaching a small group of local people, two of whom, a man and a woman, were eyewitnesses to the robbery. Listen. Excuse me, please. My name is Clark Kent. I'm a reporter for the Metropolis Daily Planet. This is my friend Bruce Wayne. How do you do? Hey, hear that, Sarah? Reporter. Uh, name's Wilkins, Sam Wilkins. How do you do, Mr. Wilkins? Make sure you get that spelling right. Ain't no C in it. Right. Got a fella in town named Wilkins spelled with a C. I'm Sarah Wilkins. Mr. Wilkins. You going to write it up in the paper? Well, I'd like to get your story first. I overheard you say that you'd seen the man who robbed the bank tonight. Eh, clear as I see you, young fella. We was both right across the street in front of the meat market. No, Sarah, we were just passing the palace barber shop. Sam Wilkins? Yeah. We was in front of the meat market. I remember telling you to stop so I could see what specials was posted on the window for tomorrow. That was before, Sarah. We was coming to the well, palace the bar barber shop. Uh, seems to be next door to the meat market, so it doesn't make much difference. Just tell her what you saw. Well, you'll never believe it, young fella. I wouldn't uh, believe it if Sam and me hadn't seen it with our own eyes. Still got to pinch myself to make sure I didn't dream it. It wasn't uh, no dream, Sam, because I've seen it, too. So what was it? What we seen. Well, sure, but what did you see? I'm telling you. We came out in the square, see, from 3rd Street. Uh, that's 3rd uh, Street over there where the Statue of Lincoln is. We can visit uh, the Fowlers. Their boy just got home from the Pacific. Uh, yes, he's oh, fine. Right. Right. All right, all right, all right. You've been visitting the Fowlers, and you came out of 3rd Street into the square on your way home. Now, when you got to the meat market... The barbershop. The meat market? Well, between the barbershop and the meat market. You heard or saw something, is that right? We sure did. We saw this bank robber. It wasn't like that, Sam. First... We heard the door of the bank fall down on the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We heard this big crash, and... And say, did you fellas see that door? Yes, well, we It's saw. a big, thick door with solid steel bars, and it was set in stone. But this robber fellow ripped it clean off its hinges. Yes, we know. Tell him about the bank vault, Sam. Well, how he pulled the steel door the, we, off We the know ball. all about that. Yeah. Now, please, Mr. Wilkins and Mrs. Wilkins, tell us about the man you saw. Yeah, well... Uh, uh, I'll tell him, Sam. After we heard this loud noise... That was the door falling down. We looked across uh, the street, and there was this big man running out of the bank. Yeah. He had a set in his hand. Had the money from the bank in it. Of course. He was a big man, you say? The biggest man I ever saw. He must have been eight feet tall. Oh, 
Oh, no, he wasn't, Sarah. He was pretty tall and well-built, but, well, I wouldn't say he was any bigger than Mr. Uh, uh, what'd you say your name was again? Kent. Uh, no, oh, yes, Kent. Alive, Sam. He was lots bigger. A good foot taller, I'd say. I tell you he wasn't. Now, look, Sam, I know what I saw. All right, all I right, all that... right, all right. Never mind. But you asked me how big he was, and I'm telling you... Didn't he you was... hear the man say never mind, Sarah? Never seen such a woman for wagging her tongue. Now, you look uh, uh, Sam. Please, I... please, it, it doesn't matter, really. We know he was tall and well-built. Now, how was he dressed? Like what? he was going to a masquerade party. He had on a blue costume and a red cape, and he was wearing a mask. That's right. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, wasn't it a red costume and a blue cape? No, it was a blue costume. Here we go again. And a red cape. Yeah, I'm not so sure about well, that. I well, I am. It really and doesn't a... matter. Uh, where did he go when he came out of the bank? Well, you'll never believe what happened then. I'll tell him, Sam. No, you he don't. Yelled. No, you don't. Oh. I'm going to tell this part. You see, he ran out of the bank, like we told you, and across the street to where them Twin Oaks stand at the end of the village green over there. And the next thing you know, he jumped. He didn't jump rightly. He left. Jump, left means the same. Well, go on, Mr. Wilkins. Well, he up and he, he, he up and left, clean over them big oaks and flew away. Are you sure? I don't believe it. Well, we're seeing him, I tell you. Clear as we see you this minute, young yeah. fella. The moon was shining bright as a new penny. Just like it is now. And we see him fly away carrying the satchel with the bank's money in it. Uh-huh. He flew that way to the east. No, no, it was more to the south, Sam. He went east, I tell you. Come over here, Bruce. He went over the church steeple, yeah. didn't he? Well, he sure he did, but then he turned over. No, south, over the great elevator. What do you make of this, Kent? I don't know what to make of it. If this man really flew... He couldn't have. You're the only person in the world who can fly. Well, that's what I always thought, but... Mr. and Mrs. Wilkins there swear they saw the man leap up into the air. Oh, they were excited. You heard how they contradicted each other. One said he was eight feet tall, and the other one said he was... Mr. Kent! Mr. Kent! Who's that? Oh, it's Constable Higby. Uh, here I am, Constable! promised to tell me if they found out anything else. Just got a phone call from Chief Roberts over to Benson City. Oh? The fella came down there. The bank robber? Yeah, showed up with the money. You mean they caught him? I ain't sure whether they caught him or not. The connection was kind of bad. I gotta get right over to Benson City. I'm gonna get Sam and Sarah Wilkins to identify him. You two can come along. I've got my car over there on the other side of the bank. Well, thanks, Constable, but we'll go over alone. Come on, Bruce, between these stores. What for? What do you think? Oh, the Superman Express takes off for Benson City, eh? Uh-huh. As soon as I strip down to my costume. Ah, oh, here, this is a good spot. Want me to get in the Batman's rig? No, no, no. When we get to Benson City, I'll change back to Kent. I just hope they hold on to that fella. Oh, I've got my fingers crossed. There we are. All set. All right, hang on, chum. Let her rip. Here we go. Up and away! Leaping from the shadowed street with Bruce Wayne clinging to his shoulders... Superman streaks through the dark sky to Benson City, 33 miles away. A few minutes later, once more in his guise and garb of Clark Kent, he and Wayne are in the office of Police Chief Morris, where they are introduced to Mrs. Green, a clear-eyed, gray-haired woman. Mrs. Green is the matron of the old people's home, Mr. Kent. That's a mile and a half north of here. That's where this Superman bank robber came down. Uh, why do you keep calling him the Superman bank robber, Chief? <laughs> well, Mr. Wayne, I never heard of anyone else who could fly... And that fellow seems to have superhuman strength. Just the same, he isn't super. Oh, never mind that, Bruce. Would you mind if Mrs. Green told us exactly what happened, Chief? Sure, why not? You mind telling it again, Mrs. Green? Not at all. I'm still a bit upset, though. Well, it often helps to talk over things that are bothering you. So I've heard. Well, as Chief Morris told you, I'm the matron of the old people's home. I was just going to my room tonight after making my rounds when I heard a loud banging on the door. Uh, what time was this? About 11.30. I see. Uh, go ahead, Mrs. Green. I hurried to the door and opened it. A tall man was standing there. He had a strange costume on, red cape over his shoulders. He was wearing a mask. A mask? I was quite startled. I said, who are you? He didn't answer. He just held out a satchel he was carrying. I asked him what it was. He... He just laughed, a deep laugh, and offered me the satchel again. I asked him again what it was and who he was, but he just laughed, put the satchel down at my feet. Uh-huh. Then he turned and ran down the steps toward the road, but... But before he got to the road... Yes? Before he got to the road, he... He jumped high into the air and flew away. Uh-oh. Just like he flew away from Groveton. After he robbed the bank there. How do you know he robbed the bank? Because there was $20,000 in that satchel he gave Mrs. Green. 
The same amount that was stolen from the Groveton Bank. And get this. The serial numbers of the bills. Check with the Groveton money. Oh, I... I don't understand it. I... I'm afraid I do. What do you mean, Kent? I'll tell you later. Well, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Green and Chief Morris. Goodbye. Thanks, Kent. Thanks very much. You're welcome, Mr. Kent. Goodbye. Uh, wait, goodbye. Kent. Uh, you said... I said later, Bruce. All right, there's nobody around. Now, what did you mean when you said you understand all this? I'm pretty sure I know who the bank robber is. What? You do? Yes. Wait just a minute and I'll tell you. We'll be back in a moment for Kent's startling revelation, so don't go away. But first, here again is your announcer. You know, gang, these comic buttons you're all collecting from packages of Kellogg's Pep sure do make a hit when you wear them pinned on your jacket or your dress or cap. Boy, they show up so clear and sharp and bright that, well, folks take a second look. And no wonder. The pictures of your favorite comic strip characters are true to life, straight from the funny papers. You know Moon Mullins by his big black cigar, and you know Smokey Stover by his bright red fireman's cap and uniform, and Superman by his red insignia and cape of flying in the wind, and all the others in this series of 18 different buttons. And what a load of fun you get collecting these comic buttons and swapping duplicates with your pals. You won't want to miss out, so ask Mom to get you some more of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Because that's the only way you can get these exclusive prizes. You don't send in any money, not even a box stop. And you can't buy them anywhere. But there's a comic button in every package of P-E-P, Pep, made by Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals. Now, back to the adventures of Superman. Outside the small police station in Benson City, Bruce Wayne, who is really Batman, waits anxiously for Kent to speak. Finally, loses patience. Come on, Kent, give. You said you know who the bank robber is. I... I'm almost certain I do. Well, then tell me, man, who is he? I think you're looking at him. You mean... Oh, Kent. Can no. Well, according to all the evidence, it looks like I've been doing it as Superman. Thunderstruck, Bruce Wayne stares at Clark Kent, who has just said that he thinks the mysterious bank robber is himself, Superman. Can Kent be serious? What is the explanation for his startling statement? Fellows and girls, don't miss tomorrow's exciting episode in our fascinating new mystery when Clark Kent explains everything to Batman. Be sure to tune in, same time, same station, for the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications.